My name is Steve Stevens, the best sports consultant money can buy. I make more money betting sports than anybody in the world. I'm the one that tells you who to bet. I'm not a bookie, I'm the bookie killer. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a day. The game that I pick, believe me, it's a winner. What I know could get you rich, cause all I pick is winners. Welcome to Las Vegas. Money talks, money talks. Welcome to Las Vegas. There's a couple different. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Stevens, VIP Sports Podcast, February 1st, 2016. Got a little windy, rainy, overcast day out here in Las Vegas. Kind of, t- you know, kind of days I like. Sitting here with my pal, the big skipper, my numero uno, the big ace, my number one gun. What's up, Skip? Well, you know me. Normally, my slogan is fun, sun, and beautiful women. Today, it is uh, freezing, windy, <laughs> cold, and just basketball winners all day long. Is my camera straight, Kenny? Because it looks like it's kind of cockeyed right now. <laughs> no, man, listen. I mean, is it looking at me fucking straight, or do I got to go like this? Well, sometimes you got to lose an eye to see clearly, Skip. You know, I think you've known that more than anybody else. Whew. Anyway, man, we're back at it. February 1st, brand new month. Couldn't be more excited. Uh, the weather's rainy. I mean, this is sales weather right here, dude. It's this cold. Is what- it's cold. I got in my car to come in this morning. It was 42 fucking degrees, Steve. That's a little too cold for the skipper. It's windy. It's about 40 mile an hour winds. So the reason why I got you out of Philly. It's fucking raining. Uh, it, I mean, my patio furniture was fucking flying down the street last night. I mean, it was all the way down the fucking street. It, it's insane. You'll be all right. You're not the only one. Like I said, it was big winds like out, out here, like you know, major last night. Out El here. Nino, baby. El Nino. A miniature El Nino hit Las Vegas, Nevada last night. Shit was going crazy. Wind was going crazy. I live in Red Rock Country Club. It was snowing a little bit over at my uh, house. I'm sure it was. You know. Well, no, no, no. Not that time. <laughs> No, we had some real some snowfall out there late night. Uh, finally got cold this morning. But uh, like I said, rainy days like this, all you do is get on the phone, sell deals, talk to your clients, bring new clients aboard, and make people a bunch of fucking money. It's podcast 63 today, people. The best 63 I can remember was Gene Upshaw, Oakland Raiders Hall of Famer, badass motherfucker. Remember me and Gene Upshaw? Oh, I know who he is, but Woo, I can't think six- of any other 63s. You number got my mind a little fucked up right now. Number 63, Gene Upshaw, man. We've been thinking about the Raiders a lot. Tell them what's been going on about oh, the I was Raiders, just gonna, well, Hey, speaking of Las Vegas weather and the Raiders, it, it looks like the, Ra- the Raiders need a new home. Uh, looks like uh, we have a possible chance to make uh, the Las Vegas Raiders or whatever, I say. Oh, hell no, bro. Could you imagine or whatever if we got the fucking Las Vegas Raiders, all the L.A. people come out here and stuff? And I tell you what, though, if that does happen, I'll be the first one to uh, open three Roberto Mexican restaurants in that stadium. I'm going to need to have the lock on all the churros. I'm going to need to have the lock on uh, all the ni- the knivery, uh, yeah. the culture fucking section, all that shit. Yeah. Well, I say we get a fucking... You open up five Robertos. If we get the Las Vegas oh, Raiders fuck. or whatever, and you can sell Corona, Tecate, Tecate Light, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Tequitos and shit like that, you're going to make a lot of money. There's going to be a lot of Tecate Light vendors at the game, bro. Oh, my God. Could you imagine, like, everybody from L.A. would be driving down here to uh, go to the games. Uh, fucking Carlos would be like, man, can you give me a ride or whatever yeah. down to the game or whatever? We'd have to have a section in the parking lot just for fucking low riders. Oh, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. I'll jack my way home. I'll jack one of these fools <laughs> out here. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll jack a fool for a ride home or whatever. I say, I, <laughs> I like me to do is drop in your truck or whatever to give me a ride. So, uh, yes, we are in. <laughs> Did you just say all I gotta do is jump in your truck, Joe, and get a ride? Yeah, 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 just jump in the back of the truck or whatever. Yeah, I'll uh, jack a fool for a ride home or whatever. I say, fuck man, those people in Vegas got a lot of money, bro. Could you imagine? You, I just, I just go to a casino, jack somebody. I'll get a ride home. I'll fucking get a Greyhound or whatever. Oh after. my god. Yeah, no, no the violence ain't gonna. Ha- Listen, let me just tell you guys right now. Uh, it's not going to be Viva Las Vegas Raiders. It's not going to happen. You don't think so? No, uh, it, it won't happen. Uh, well, do- you know, uh, Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders, has met with Sheldon Adelson here in Las Vegas. And Correct. He, if you don't know who Sheldon Adelson is, people, he's uh, only what, one of the top ten richest men in the world. Yeah. Guy's worth like $60 billion fucking dollars. A lot of paper. He owns the Venetian. He owns the Palazzo. He owns Sands Corporation. Uh, he owns half a fucking Macau. So he's a big uh, Las Vegas. He has billions of dollars yeah, in he, Las Vegas he's worth, already. I, I, I think he's worth like $60 billion. I mean, he makes Trump look small. Oh, that's a fact. Yeah. So he, anyway, he's met with the owner of the fucking Raiders, Mark Davis. They're out there checking out that 42-acre plot right next to uh, the Thomas and Mac there between where the Rebels play basketball at the Thomas and Mac and, and, the, and the airport. Yeah. and they, they, they got and, That huge fucking empty lot there. It's, yeah. it's huge. It's a, gr- it's a good spot. It would be a goddamn good spot. Like, well, if anybody can get it done, one of the richest men in the world. I mean, the NFL say they're open-minded. 
Well, of course, listen, I'm not saying it's a, it's not a chance that the NFL wouldn't come to Vegas. NFL come to Vegas all day long, and the NFL's open-minded. It's getting it done, getting the stadium, and make it happen. We've tried to do it before. Do we want, I mean, listen, if the money's right, it's going to happen. However, just something, I mean, even when the mayor Goodman was behind us, because you know our mayor and everybody will be behind it. For some reason, when it comes down to it, the stadium's not the right area. Yeah, but Shit never, doesn't happen. You've never had a guy with sixty fucking billion dollars true uh, behind it either. True. And in this day and age, hey, money, in this day money, and age, money talks, right? Money he, talks. If money talks, he has a lot to say. He's got a lot to fucking say. And in this day and age, you don't go this way anymore. Anyway, you go this way. Yeah. So you know, with all the parking going up, I mean, skyscraper style. I mean. They could probably make a stadium. They're talking about making a, a, a billion-dollar-plus stadium out 65,000 seats in a domed stadium, yeah. a $1 billion project. I, I mean, what would it do for our economy? It would blow us out of the water. It would it would give everybody jobs and make the strip bigger than it is already. Um, you know, it would pretty it, much be it, our local team. Oh, Listen, I'm not a big fan of the Raiders. I mean, uh, however, a stadium like that, yeah, I mean, hopefully we could get a baseball team in there in the fucking spring. The well, summer. we can say hope this, that, and the other. Let me look into the camera. We're not getting the Las Vegas Raiders. You can write that down and circle it and put a fucking star and a circle next There's to it. There's another prediction by that, Steve That Stevens. you can take to the motherfucking bank. I deal with all these fucking people in Las Vegas, politicians. We will not have that Las Vegas Raiders. Wow. Speaking of a new stadium, though, the UNLV running Rebels... We're looking for a new stadium as well. Well, that's part of the thing. I mean, that's a whole part of the deal. They, they want to let the uh, the UNLV football team play there. And uh, the coach, Sanchez, from Bishop Gorman, the new coach. Hold on a second. So, listen, there's a lot of people behind this, Steve. I was just going to say, let, I mean, let, let me your, back. Your prediction is, I mean, you're going out on a limb there. Oh, I am going out on a limb. But listen, you like I said, you got the Sands Expo owner. Don't forget, we start talking about UNLV. Now we got the Fertitas. Yep. These are some powerful motherfuckers. Some serious fucking, <laughs> there's some serious money behind it. This project. stadium can get built, no problem. They can raise the money, no fucking Listen, problem. If there was ever a chance for it to get done, this would be it. I'd say they got a pretty good shot with the kind of money and the people they got behind this project. So what's going to happen is they're going to get everybody pumped up about the new stadium, and what's going to happen is UNLV is going to get a new stadium. Mark my words, we won't have the Raiders. No Raiders. I would love to have the Raiders. What would it mean to us to have the Raiders here personally as a franchise in Vegas? It'd mean a lot. We've never had a professional team uh, of football uh, or baseball uh, or basketball that we've ever could get behind. I've, I mean, I'm born and raised third generation. I've always banged UNLV. It's the I only would, thing that we could. Man, I would. Fuck. And I've never claimed UNLV football. It's always been basketball from day one. And ever since we had a couple coaches that fucked up our program, we haven't even had that. That's why we need to go grab Patino or somebody special, get a new stadium, and go blowing UNLV out the motherfucking water. Put UNLV and Las Vegas map on the motherfucking map and start clowning motherfuckers. UNLV is a beautiful, beautiful place. It's an awesome city. We got the finest foods, the finest restaurant, the best entertainment. We would welcome professional sports like there's no big deal. It would I would die for a fucking Major League Baseball team. Right? And so would their fans. because they build we build a stadium here like they have down in Arizona, Diamondbacks, you know, with the... The locals could get behind it and uh, support it uh, all day long. I'd be the first season ticket holder. Well, so would I. Like I said, you go back to the UNLV running Rebel days where we have an okay football team or, more importantly, a basketball team, parking lot's full, people are repping Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and uh, with an attitude, too. So we'll get behind the team uh, sooner or later. We will have a, a, a football baseball or basketball team within the next 10 years here. That's a fucking fact. And uh, our economy will support it. That, that, that's one thing that I could tell you right now. Bum, 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 anyway, welcome back, bum, ladies bum, and gentlemen. Bum, 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 yeah, let's go get fucking paid. Let's get a football team. And uh, even if we got the fucking Las Vegas Raiders or whatever, I'd still support it 110%. Get the Raiders and the UNLV to play in the same team. And uh, hopefully nothing corrupt happens and they don't fuck up gambling for guys like us, because don't forget, well, let's talk still about, has to be sanctioned. You know, we still want to be able to bet on Let's talk about that aspect. How would that affect gambling on the NFL games here in Las Vegas? Well, I can tell you that, because it, it happened with UNLV running Rebels. Remember right. for five years straight that they took college basketball, you could bet every game except UNLV. Mm -hmm. So even if it came down to it, worse come to worse, it wouldn't affect us that much. What they would do is take the Raider game off the board. I agree. That's what would happen. Yeah. It wouldn't affect NFL. It wouldn't affect, yeah. affect betting. It wouldn't do nothing. It would just mean one team that nobody bets anymore. You wouldn't be able to bet on the Raider games here in Las Vegas. Most likely, that's what would happen. That's, that's Until 
That, that's a trend that they have shown in the past. Correct. However, they did lift the ban on betting on UNLV games. And they would lift it on the professional and, and, ban first, but just to get it passed to make everybody comfortable, yeah. they would maybe do two years of you can't bet the Rebels, I mean uh, the Raiders, and see that it doesn't make a shit difference because these games aren't fixed, and Jimmy the Fixer and Jimmy Joe and Larry mm-hmm. Lair and the motherfucking games ain't being fixed no more. Well, just People like, aren't paying players. You're not paying UNLV. You're not going to pay a professional team to fix games for you. you don't have, it costs you a billion dollars to fix an NFL game. Well, just like the the owner of um, the Silver, the owner of the Silverton Hotel and Casino, he's part owner of the Lakers, and one of the guys on the board of directors for Caesars Harris Entertainment yeah. is part owner of the Lakers. He got something to do with it. Uh, I know Caesars and Harris properties weren't taking Laker bets for a while, and right. the Silverton uh, they don't take Laker bets at the Silverton because because the owner's part. What about owner. the Palms and the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, the same thing, right? So, I mean, it's not going to affect gambling at all. We know how to work it. Las Vegas, we're born and raised. We'll let you guys know what will happen. But yeah, we'll tell you what the fuck's up. <laughs> that's a fucking fact. <laughs> I'll let you know what's going to happen, yeah. and uh, they'll probably take it off the board for a little while, maybe six months, mm-hmm. put it back on the board because gambling is not fixed. You cannot pay players, uh, and that's fucking that. Uh, you know, moving on, uh, that you know, Viva Las Vegas. We were just trying to put Vegas on the map. It would be a very exciting thing for my city, very exciting thing for our state. But uh, to you guys, welcome back to the VIP Sports Podcast. Uh, once again, if you want to get a hold of us, it's 877-220-6540. Uh, you can go to VIPSportsLasVegas.com if you want to see anything special as far as packages that we got. We got levels of packages from A to Z. Plain and fucking simple. If you want to see our packages, go to... <laughs> oh, I like that. You want to see my package? Go, go to, to VIPSportsLasVegas.com. You'll see some packages. You'll see something you can handle, something that'll fit in there for... <laughs> From small to big, however you want it. You know oh, what I mean? Fuck. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram at VIP Sports LV, or you could just send us a direct message with any questions that you have. Let's get into our show today, Skip. Well, let's stick with the NFL real quick since we're talking about the Raiders. February 1st, 2016. Let's, let's, uh, let's spend about fucking 32 seconds on the Super Bowl because if you want to talk about the Super Bowl, you can chime in the fucking ESPN. It's on 24 hours a fucking day. For guys, I, I don't want to blow this podcast up with the Super Bowl. We're not going to, but I mean, it's Super Bowl fever right now. Uh, Carolina's minus five and a half. Uh, the over-under is 45. It's going to be a marquee matchup. It's a matter of can... We'll just talk broad about it. Can Denver's defense handle Carolina, and can Peyton Manning score against Carolina's defense? That's what it's coming down to, plain and fucking simple. If you want to know where the money's coming here in Las Vegas, there's tons of money coming in on Carolina. Nobody believes Denver can win this game. The line opened up at four, four and a half. It's up to five and a half and six some places on Carolina. Uh, If you're betting Carolina, you're thinking they're going to win by at least a touchdown or more. The total's gone up from 44 and a half up to 45 and a half. I've seen some 46s out there. So the public is firing on Carolina and the over just the way we figured they would. That's a fucking fact. And just to give you some information, you know, uh, Peyton Manning uh, is the experienced guy, Cam Newton and his team being kind of young. But at the same time, Carolina is a lot more powerful. Um, At the same time, Peyton Manning might have Papa John and a horseshoe up his ass. Yeah. He could be sleeping with a leprechaun. He can have the, there's higher powers than us, guys. You got that man upstairs that could be with him and, and, and he can have a stellar game and win. But at uh, the end of the day, like I said, you got an old man that hasn't impressed me. Does he have a Super Bowl? Yes, he does. Has he choked in a lot of major fucking games to get to the Super Bowl? Absolutely. Um, here's the question that I would answer for everybody. Um, if Peyton Manning loses... Uh, versus Cam Newton. Who has more to lose? I would say Peyton Manning. Of course. Peyton Manning loses. He goes down as a loser. The one Super Bowl that he did get doesn't mean nothing. He goes down down as owning a lot of Papa John's. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Cam Newton loses. It's a guy that made it to the Super Bowl. Strong young kid. Still has a future. Still has a bigger career. Can get him there next year, the year after. Wouldn't do anything to him but help his career. Mm -hmm. He wins the career. You'll see him on every fucking commercial you could possibly see. Uh, Peyton Manning wins. He's already been on every commercial. It's a pretty easy game to see, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pretty much easy money game. We're not going to get into it too much. And uh, There's that, a lot of prop bets out there. There's sheets and sheets of them. Uh, that's where a lot of people like to have fun, to, pe- sit, to sit here and go over all the prop bets. I mean, fuck, we'd need a three-hour show for that. That's a fact. And, l- ladies and gentlemen, here's my advice to you. Um, if you ask me for a prop bet, I'm a sarcastic motherfucker. I'm going to tell you, you can prop my nuts right on your chin. <laughs> Prop bets, <laughs> because anybody that's dead serious about making money, we don't do prop bets. However, let me explain something to you. Look at me. Super Bowl is a day for amateurs. 
It's a day for mom and pop. It's a day for grandma and grandpa. Uh, the Mormon boy that never bet has $1,000 on the fucking game. Mm -hmm. uh, Jehovah Witness that's not supposed to watch football, they have fucking $500 on the game. The country boy that lives out on a ranch that doesn't play, he has fucking $500 on Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it's the a, district attorney up in Minnesota. The politician. He's got five grand on the motherfucker. Barack Obama has twenty thousand on it. You know, mm. Bill Clinton. Uh, mm. if, if you don't think George Bush Jr. has a hundred thousand on the fucking game, mm. you're out of your motherfucking mind. Yeah, if you don't think McCain's got at least a hundred thousand on it, you're out of your mind. This is what presidential and politicians and trust fund guys and hedge fund guys and oil tycoons do. They sip whiskey, they smoke cigars, and they watch the fucking Super Bowl. They'll be having a fucking Illuminati Super Bowl party, they, and, and they'll all be firing. They have. Kentucky Derby and no. the Super Bowl. Yeah, That's no. what this is. A, yeah. This is for the elite. This is for the rich people. This is for the first class. This is where they come out. They'll fly all the fucking hookers in. They'll have yeah. a big fucking Illuminati party. Oh, uh, yeah. They'll be flowing the finest fucking whiskey, the finest fucking bourbon. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, they'll be firing on the game. There'll be more prostitutes in San Francisco than fish in the water. That you can mm. fucking take to the wow. bank. There's, the, there's gonna be a lot of crabs in San Francisco. There's gonna be more <laughs> crabs in San Francisco. <laughs> After next weekend, there'll be more crabs. And let me ask you this: What about the guy or the? Is anybody fielding these fucking calls? Well, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's, 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 it's not. The there's no way our phone should ring three times in a row. There, there, there's four secretaries. That's the fourth ring. Yeah, there's four secretaries out there. That just means we're having a lot of fucking calls. But yeah, uh, for the phone to ring like that's amazing. I think that's a personal line, though. That's why it's going off. Why? Are you excited to get back on the phone? I just don't think our phone should ring four times in a row. So that means I need to grab it. I'm, right. not, I'm not dissing Veronica or Gaddy. No, nah, nobody does. But yeah, I'm the phone should be getting answered on the There it goes again. Yeah, I don't answer. The phone's I, I ringing off the hook. So anyway, like I said, we don't do prop bets. Uh, we don't do anything like that at all. We obviously don't make money or answer the phones. And uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's calling wants to put 10 grand on the fucking uh, game. Oh, fuck it. And, 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 and we're doing we, a podcast. We got, and we're over here doing a podcast. Nobody's getting a fucking phone. There's 35 people out there. I think they got it handled, Big Skipper. Somebody sign them up, please. I'll be right out to talk to them. Anyway, Super Bowl's a day for amateurs. My advice is you don't need to call us because what I'm going to do is is I'm going to fucking bait and switch you right into a basketball game. You don't game. need to call us for the Super Bowl. No. You do need to call us for the basketball that we've been absolutely fucking dominating. I'm telling people, don't call me for anything yeah. to do with the Super Bowl. Please don't call Go me. Go bet yeah. on your own. Go bet on your own. You got a 50-50 chance. Yes. Go bet prop bets. It's called beginner's luck. Go get drunk as fuck and bet a bunch of crazy shit, and hopefully you win. For it's, anyone to tell you that they've got any kind of fucking inside information uh, on the fucking Super Bowl, you better tie your shoelaces and run like hell. Uh, that motherfucker's lying straight to hey, you. Hey, you don't think the guys on Scores and Odds, Dom the Dominator, oh, God. and D'Angelo doesn't have a fucking side any, or the if, side on that game? If dude? anybody's texting you or sending you emails or calling you saying, I've got inside information <laughs> on the big game Sunday, they are so fucking full of shit. This is the most scrutinized game in the history of the world. I think hey, D'Angelo, D'Angelo, you got a one fucking hundred square foot office mm. you tell people you side games in. Mm. It would cost probably $500 million to pay off a motherfucking uh, NFL team. It doesn't happen. Nothing's fixed. Betting both sides won't get you paid. If you don't know the players, you don't know the coaches, and you don't know the guys that made the line, you don't have a fucking clue what's going on. You on don't the have Super a shot. Bowl. You got to know where the sharp money is. And any real better would not be betting the Super Bowl. Period. The best. Last year, I bet a fucking half a million dollar bet on the Super Bowl. This year, I won't be betting it at all. Plain and simple. Because there's too much money in basketball. However, we are supposed to talk about football. It's a day that we are invited to a gigantic party. As you know, Skip and I will be at the Super Bowl. We're going to give you guys a little podcast or, you know, the things I do in the Rolls Royce. We'll I'll, give show, you, I'll show you some videos. I'll show, I'll, hey guys, look. Maybe. I'll make sure I give you views of Skip when he is. Full. No, I'm not going to be. I'm going to show I'm you, gonna I'm gonna show you guys up. the real Skip, my not the podcast Skip. I'm going to show you no, the you're not. 30 Jamerson no, Skip. No, you're not, because my son's going to be with me, and I'm oh, not, okay. not going to be in oh, Okay, I didn't know. I think you said he wasn't going. No, he's coming. Oh, okay. So right side's coming. Yeah. Shout out to right side in the motherfucking house. Heard you're kicking ass in baseball over yeah. there. Making the team. Uh, superstar pitcher, coaches liking his uh, three-quarter uh, like throw, his, huh? Liking his three-quarter arm release. Yeah, because like I said, if the motherfucker doesn't want to go over to the top, he doesn't have to. It is That's what it, it is. Yep. Take it for what it is and like me and work with me or get me the fuck up out of here. I'll play a different position. That's it. Get that fucking slider hitting that lower right corner of the outside plane on the righty. Heard his bats are on point right now too, mm. huh? He's doing all right, man. Let's see what happens. Well, hey, man, you, you don't even need to speak English or know how to catch if you know how to bat. Mm. That's a fucking fact.
So well, we don't want to jinx them, but you know the kids. Anyway, we'll give you some crazy videos from the Super Bowl. We're going to be pumped up. It's a day that I'm excited about, but it's not a money making day to bet a bunch of money on. It's a day to have fun, go to your family's house, cook some food, eat. It's a party day. It's a day for fucking amateurs to bet sports and have fun. But it is good for the industry because it gets people betting. I get people, thousands of people call my office on that day, and we bait and smitch them right over to basketball. That's it. Anyway, moving on, like I said, the VIP Sports Podcast will be going live from the Super Bowl, and we're excited. Halftime will have Beyonce and Coldplay headlining the headline festivities. Boy, I can't wait. That'll be time for me to go take a piss. You won't see one fucking bit of that <laughs> halftime show. I will bet $100,000 on I, that. I'll, I'll be on my way to the restroom for that, and the, yeah. I'll, I'll be grabbing a soft pretzel and maybe one uh, beverage of choice. Before the second, before halftime happens, second quarter with about five minutes left, you're on your way up to the top. You'll probably overview, watch the rest of it, and then get right to the alcohol thing, get you a pretzel, and uh, kick it for a while, huh? Mm -hmm. Strategy-wise, uh, Broncos, uh, and then we'll stop talking about it. This, the is Broncos, more, this is more than 32 seconds about the Super Bowl. This is it. Strategy-wise, what do the Broncos have to do? They got to just keep canning fucking little ears off the field. It's as simple as that. I mean, I think they got to run the ball. They got to hand the ball off and uh, control the line of scrimmage, and which is going to be hard for them to do, but I think they, I think they can do it. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the only way. They, they got to keep the game close. So by, you're saying they need to keep it on the ground. They, they need to the, run. They got to keep the game close by running the ball. And on defense, their front seven is going to have to be more ferocious than they've ever been. They're the number one defense in the league. Don't forget that, people. Yeah, you're, ladies you're, and you're, gentlemen, you're, you're talking you're, about the number one yeah. defense in the NFL, you know? You're giving six points to the number one fucking defense in the NFL. I mean, just keep that in mind. And keep in mind, Carolina came out in the year being the underdog for the first four or five games into the lines makers woke the fuck up. So it's not something you can pick on your own, but have fun. It's a day for amateurs. Enjoy it. Just realize the lines are made for a reason, and uh, <laughs> these cool. motherfuckers know what they're doing. Hold on. Carolina's plan of attack, Skip, just real quick, brief for our people. Carolina's got to just keep doing what, they were, what they've been doing. I mean, they, they... Took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, they need to play football. Yeah, just don't make any changes. Don't overpressure yourself. I know it's hard not to be, you know, excited and overpressure yourself on Super Sunday. Just go out and play the game you've been playing especially the last two, you know, two games, and, and, and you'll be fine. I mean, here's, just, here's, just, here's, do, just do your thing. All the pressure's on Denver and, and Manning. That is a fact. Pressure's all on, on, on Manning and Papa John's uh, for them to win <laughs> without any shadow of a fucking doubt. A lot of pressure on Papa John's to be able to get all those pizzas out within 35 minutes or less. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're going to really be making a lot of fucking... I don't know if people. Payton's going to be more stressed out about how much money he's going to make on the pizzas. Or if he's won in the Super Bowl or not. I'd have to say he's a little bit more excited about this you Super know, Bowl. You know, man, you know how many stone motherfuckers is going to be in Colorado for this game? Yeah, it, it's going to be a lot. The, the, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. My plan of attack for Denver would to be uh, run the ball, pass, any way you can to score. I think they need to do a little bit of both. However, I think the key to this game is the first half. Carolina has a thing for blowing people out in the first half and then playing shitty or beating themselves in the second half. I truly believe Denver needs to stay in this game. They need to either be winning the game or losing by no less than six and a half to have any chance to win this game. Carolina, you just need to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, go out hard and do like you always do, but they need to play second half the same way they play first half. Go out there and play like they did all year, and uh, you're going to see a very good game. Yeah, if Denver's down by two touchdowns at halftime or more, yeah, it's going to be pretty much over. I don't see Peyton Manning being able to come back from down two double digits. If they're down double digits at halftime, it could pose a problem. That, well, that's what I'm saying. And a lot of talk about Cam Newton. You know, Charles Barkley's accusing ESPN of building a black versus white Super Bowl. Charles Barkley. Come on, Chuck. Shut the fuck up, You're better dude. than that, Chuck. Can't I, Chuck, I, Chuck. I, the, I, only I, re the only reason why you're still working, Charles, is because you're a degenerate fucking gambler. That old Las Vegas millions of dollars. That's why you're the only one out of all your old rich homeboys that you played with is still working. You Because this motherfucker don't like to work. All right, Charles, so save your bullshit. You're a degenerate gambler. If anything, you need to call VIPSportsLasVegas.com <laughs> like Denny Mason told you to before he passed because you don't know a fucking thing about these We've games. We've talked about Chuck once before. You play in the NBA and you couldn't pick a fucking winner to save your life. You suck at roulette. You're one of the worst roulette players I've ever bet seen in my fucking life. And you're not that good at betting college basketball either. I know that for a fact. And deep down, anyone that talks about a prejudice, you're prejudiced. Deep down, you don't like yeah. a lot of white Come people. Come on, Chuck. Chuck Shut the listen, fuck up. Listen, I like Chuck, man. So he, do I. He's a good dude. So do I, but he's full I, of shit more than anybody. Yeah, I've talked 
talked to him a, a few times. Uh, I got someone that's very tight with him. That's a very good friend of his. Chuck's a good guy, but shame on you for bringing this race shit up, dude. Anybody's going to say it's a black and white quarterback. The last five years uh, or six years, we've had a couple games where it's black and white quarterbacks. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. It is what it is. It's not going to change. So slow down, Charles. It's not a black and white thing. It's a fucking football game. You're looking to cause controversy because you still need work. Stop gambling so fucking much or call Steve Stevens and I'll show you how to keep that NBA. Oh, that NBA money's gone. Hmm. Only money Charles Barkley's spending right now is fucking... Uh, uh, commentator money. That's the only money he's spending. That NBA money's been long gone. But you're a good dude. You whine a lot. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah, this past weekend was the first weekend without football. Uh, we made a lot of money in college basketball in the NBA. Uh, let me ask you something. Yesterday, the Pro Bowl in the NFL and the Hockey All-Star game on the same day. Who scheduled that? I think that's the stupidest move in the world because in times like this, uh, people want to see a cold game out there in the snow. That hockey, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right to your face. I don't like hockey watching it, but that particular game, I do. Really? Yeah, just because I didn't it. like the three-on-three -three format, man. I, I could only watch it for a few minutes. I turned it off, and I and I watched the Pro Bowl for even less. Hold on, that, that's funny you say that because. But, but how do you have the Pro Bowl on the same day? I have an answer. As the hockey all-star fucking. I, game. I, you I mean, who's scheduling that? But I think you answered your own question. These, these, these things have been scheduled in the past. They get no positive income. They get no positive outcome. They try to change the days. They try to change the location. They try to set the date before the Super Bowl, after the Super Bowl. The bottom I line under, is I understand they did they're, it two, the they're two failing uh, promoted sports during this time, and you hit it right on the head. I turned the hockey game on for about three minutes. I had to turn it was on. Was disappointed. Yeah, I didn't like it. Turned it to the Pro Bowl, which lasted about two minutes. Yeah. Turned on the music, Turned started the hanging out with my family, asking yeah. them where they wanted to go. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't get the whole all-star thing. Uh, the only all-star game that really matters or is any good uh, is baseball all-star game. Period. I mean, there's a reason why they play. They try to fucking win, and the winning league has home field advantage in the World Series. And I, it's I mean, set up in the middle of the season. You have an all-star yeah, break. Right. The, the players that aren't playing get to go home and chill. They love it. They yeah. get a break. The players get to go all-stars and pat themselves on the back and yeah, this realize NFL, you're the best in the world. This NFL Pro Bowl is a fucking it's set joke. Up it's a waste of fucking money. It's a joke. So here's what they do. You either deplete it all together and yeah, you don't just, do it anymore, yeah, or, it. or you do it after the Super Bowl and you get real players. Maybe. Plain and fucking simple. Listen, nobody goes in a fucking game anyway. Anyone that goes, they just go to be in Hawaii and chill. They've, they've done it before. The, they've done it the after. Fucking, there's nobody in the stand, Steve. They don't hit anybody. The, the Pro Bowl they is a they, failure. They don't hit the quarterback. And the hockey bullshit, that three-on-three, three, I didn't fucking like it. Can I give you the answer there, on the football, though, before we no, go off? There's no checking at all in the hockey all-star games. Yeah. I mean, it, it was. I, I didn't like it at all. Uh, Can I, thought, I tell you what the Pro Bowl is since you want the answer? It's just a money racket. It's it well no, it's not a money racket because it loses. What it is, it's the it's the reward of the NFL of players that made the All-Star to go out to Hawaii and let their family surf. Right. And it's the NFL's way of rewarding the best players. And yes, they don't make any money off it, but if I played in the league and I made the All-Star game, it would be pretty nice to take the family out to Hawaii and go kick it. That's all it is. Yeah, but from a, stand, from a fan standpoint... A, mar a fan and a marketing standpoint, yeah, don't even fucking advertise it. Right. Don't even advertise it. I mean, well, you got to put it on TV, but uh, I, I don't fucking know. It's a waste of time, but that's want, all it is. What do you want to talk about? College basketball? Well, like I said, football's pretty much done. No one's going to see football ever again besides the Super Bowl. And like I said, all we're doing right now is making money in college basketball. There's a ton of games this week. Oh. Uh, I focused in on several different games. Coming off a 6-1 and one record from last week, couldn't be more fucking excited. Uh, when you're hitting 80-plus percent for the week, Skip, if you're not making money, then you shouldn't be in the business. Here's the thing. If, uh, you know, we've talked about this before. If you're a guy out there that's got a football hangover right now and you're waiting to get involved in college basketball or the NBA, let me just say this to you. Here's a reality check, people. There's only 10 to 12 games left in the regular college basketball season. Let Period. Me, let me say that to you again. There's only 10 to 12 regular season college basketball games left. And then you're heading right into the first week of March, and you're heading into the conference tournaments, and we're in March Madness. So what he's trying to say is your time to build a bankroll is running fucking short. What are you waiting for? Get involved, start betting some basketball games, build a fucking bankroll so we can take you into March Madness and make you more money than you've ever made in your fucking life. Those three weeks in March and the end of February, we make more money in those three weeks than we do three weeks in football. Literally, we make 10... Less, I would have to say the month of March, we make more than our biggest month in football. 
which is October, November. Absolutely. We triple. Because, year in and year out. Because there's five times the amount of games. you got conference tournaments going on all day, every day. From 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. For my money, the conference tournaments are, are more profitable and more exciting than uh, the actual tournament itself. And the thing about it is you can get key information. It's big boys playing little kids. It's, it, it, it's divisions that you're following. You can find boys against men. You can find some lucrative money out there and it's that the line goal. makers can't. It's impossible to make a line on some of these games. And it's loser goes home. That's a fucking fact. Yeah, which means they're playing and they're playing. Playing hard. See, yeah, that brings up my point. Like we were talking about Iowa State being some of the number one teams. Uh, a lot of people uh, pounded Iowa State uh, this week and got killed. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Were, they were, <laughs> <laughs> if you were listening to the skipper, I didn't tell you to bet them on Saturday. No, 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 we, what do you mean? We had the opposite I side. Didn't, I, I didn't tell you to bet them. I mean, uh, they got their <coughs> they got their ass whooped by A uh, and M on the road. Oh my I mean, god! They lost by ten points. <laughs> Skip, my point Listen, is why they, I'm choking they, is we had A M in. Like I said, these people think we're giving them some little messages. Guys, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. You got to know when to play them, period. Iowa State. Let's talk about Iowa State for a second. Iowa State is still ranked uh, 14th. They gave them a 14th rank. They actually play Tuesday against West Virginia, number nine. Yes, they do, and that's going to be a hell of a game. Let's Uh, talk about that a little bit. What do you think about that? Well, they're going to be at home against West Virginia. Correct. Um, you know, they lost to AM on the road. They went into AM and lost that game by double digits. It's, well, they kept it. That was a five, six point it, yeah, game the whole it game. It was though. a tight game the whole game, and uh, it got away from them a little bit at the end, and they lost by 10. Uh, however, that's not an embarrassing loss. AM's a tough fucking team, and at home, you know, they should have probably won that game. However, you know, you're talking about a team that's beat Kansas, uh, they beat Iowa, and they beat uh, Oklahoma. So, listen, keep an eye out for them. That's going to be a very exciting game tomorrow night. Iowa State and West Virginia. And if you give us a call at 877-220-6540, I'll tell you a little bit more about that game. Well, not only that, but I'm going to tell you guys about a couple other marquee matchups that we're going to have this week that I'm going to reveal to everybody. On Tuesday alone, not only do you have that game, you got UNLV against New Mexico. You got number 20, Kentucky at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wednesday uh, on my matchup, uh, number 25, Notre Dame against Miami. That's a fucking game I'm putting $100,000 on. It's a game I have a lot of fucking money on. Notre Dame's been looking pretty good. And I got a lot of other games that I don't really want to mention right now. But like I said, it's win big, go big, or go the fuck home. Mm-hmm. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, reason why we do these podcasts is to take you into my life as a professional sports better. Um, a lot of guys that do podcasts, a lot of guys have shows. They talk about sports. They don't bet sports. Uh, a lot of guys uh, take pictures in front of the UNLV uh, stadium. They take pictures in front of the Bellagio Fountains, and they live in Wisconsin. They live in Florida. They live in New York, okay? We do these podcasts because I'm one of the most feared sports bettors in the fucking world. Bet anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars a game, and people want to see somebody real. And I'm going to give you the real. I'm going to give you the same games that I'm betting. Take you into my life of uh, a guy that bets big and lives large. Real fucking simple. The Nevada sports book, Steve, took in four billion dollars last Say year. Say that one waiting. more time, please. Here in the state of Nevada, where it's legal to bet on sports, Nevada sports books took in four billion dollars in, in action last year. And if you didn't get your Fair share of that oh money. Oh my God. If you didn't get a piece of that money, shame on you. It's a billion dollar industry. Don't you think you deserve your fucking fair share? We got ours. Like I said, they took in four billion. What that means is that's how much they took in in bets, period. Mm, right. Four billion. Hello to you other states out there that don't make gambling legal. Hello, are you fucking stupid? Nevada took in four billion dollars. Colorado, you think marijuana's good? Try legalizing gambling. Oh yeah, <laughs> legal. We 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 won't even have to pay taxes anymore. Between gambling and marijuana, guys like you and I won't even have to pay. It'd be a ten percent flat tax. We stand for the legalized promotion, the promotion of legalized sports betting all over the country. Like he said, if you're out there and you're the governor of another state, if you're a politician in another state, hey Christy, state, Christy in New Jersey, I see why you're fighting for us, buddy. Woo! Four billion we took in. Is that something that New Jersey could use out there? Yeah. Is that something California could handle? And nobody got hurt from that. Nobody got killed. I California, mean, you're, you take in hundreds of billions in your lotto. Could you use an extra four billion in legal sports betting? Absolutely. Uh, Utah, uh, I don't know if you're going to get involved, but uh, <laughs> Florida, could you use an extra four billion dollars? Yeah. Jesus Christ, in the state of Florida, it'd be ten billion taken in. Florida would be huge. If they legalize sports betting in Florida... Florida they, and California... They, Florida would surpass N- uh, Nevada. Florida, California, and New York would surpass Nevada. If they opened up some casinos Hold in on. Florida... What and about Texas? And, and legalized what about betting, Texas? Woo! What about Texas? 
I don't know. Nobody wants to go to Texas. I'm talking about a No big, one wants. We're talking I'm, about betting I sports. I know there's a lot of money there. I, you don't think in, in Florida. Our what, biggest clients are in Texas. What kid. I'm saying, Steve, is if you opened up casinos on the coast of fucking Florida, okay? I'm not even talking to casino. I'm talking about a fucking. Uh, well, I'm talking about uh, a couple. What's the machines of, called? Like we do at the airport? Yeah, the fucking kiosk. I'm talking about making gambling legal. You could go into 7 Eleven and bet a $500 ticket well, in the sure. kiosk. Well, that, yeah, that's all part of it. Uh, what I'm saying is if. I'm talking about hotels. If you had a resort area with a couple of casinos and hotels on the fucking coast of Florida. They'll probably be bars. That legalized fucking sports betting? It'll be bars oh, and restaurants. It'll be bigger than Vegas. Okay, well, just like Vegas has the, the poker machines, mm-hmm. it'll be the same thing at their bars. They'll have sports betting. Well, of course, it's a casino. Yeah. But however, well, no, 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 but it'll be a small casino that the bars can handle, restaurants can handle. Yeah. You put your ticket in right there and you get paid yeah. through the machine. 1,200 hotel rooms right on the fucking beach in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Sit here and fire away on games. All the hotels in Miami on Miami Beach, the, oh, the Dallano, God. the Fountain Blue, you, all these big time, the, the Trump, all these big ass hotels. You put your bets in right there. I'd have to call my wife and say, listen, we're, we're now going to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. All these, all these places, all they do is open up a small little cage with a lot of money mm-hmm. and uh, do what they do. But yeah, four billion they took in last year. That proves uh, that gambling definitely brings a big revenue to any. That proves that there's a, a lot of other states out there sleeping. Uh, California's fiending for it. Wake up. Florida's fiending for it. Yeah, definitely wake up. Wake up. You guys support the legalization of gambling. Um, boxing, um, very sad. Floyd Mayweather's out of the game. My good friend is not coming back. Um, he's been going country to country to country to country. Traveling the world. Popped in here the other day. I know him like the back of my hand. Guys ask me all the time. Guys, he hasn't been in the gym. He usually goes in there and fucks around just for fun. My man is retired. Money May's not coming back. Enjoying he, life. He told me, Darren, I have a few hundred million liquid in the bank. Mm. Plus, I already know what he owns. I mean, he, he can't spend it at this point. Mm. But to bring up boxing, lightweight, heavyweight, tied about rematch. Uh, Segway, uh, did, did you not see this fight? No. Kalalev beats the fuck. Uh, Jean Pascal, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He used to be a middleweight, moved up, this, that, and the other. Uh, I don't, I forget. Cavella, the fucking Russian, said he wanted to extend the rounds and just punish him even more. But anyway, Pascal uh, stepped up a weight class. Freddie Roach had to stop the fight. This Russian just fucking pounded him. Oh, boy. It was fucking embarrassing. Pascal got his ass whooped. Uh, the other, the Russian says he wanted to keep giving him a pounding because the guy just doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. And Freddie Roach stopped the... Uh, Freddie Roach got... No, I mean, Freddie, you're around a lot of losers, dude. <laughs> Freddie! Freddie, I mean, I'm over here with uh, the Mayweather gym, the TMT family, and I've seen him on a lot of other sides of our family over here, man. He's, he's making a lot of money, but you sure got a lot of losers, right, Freddie. Even, I mean, dude, do you have anybody that's undefeated or you got anybody big over there? You got anybody winning? Yeah, I think Floyd Mayweather's gym is the only one that has undefeated fighters. You know what I mean? Uh, but what can we expect from the heavyweight division after a decade of Klitschko and his brother running shit? Probably nothing right now, okay? Heavyweight's in, uh, in trouble. You got a couple good guys out there that, that look good that I like, but the question was, who is stellar? Uh, nobody worth it being nobody. excited about at all. It's about as beat down as Jeff Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek gets fired by the Phoenix Suns, Steve, in the NBA. Yeah. Four, 14 and 35 start. Yeah, well, he, he wasn't saying hello to his kids before every game like he used to shoot free throws. You remember Hornacek? Yeah, what do you mean? Do I remember him? Fucking monster point guard, huh? Yeah, for Utah. Yeah, he was uh, borderline retarded. <laughs> but uh, he was well, a good Apparently dude. his coaching skills have... Uh, not flourished. He's 14 and 35. Do you and, not uh, remember him shooting free throws? He just got fired to start Do you not remember his ritual shooting free throws, mm-hmm. wiping his face, saying hello to his kids? Yes or no? No, I don't remember. Okay, well, figure for a guy like yourself with all your knowledge. I'm not a big NBA guy. Years in the game. I'm just reading the NBA headlines. Lakers lose 10 games in a row. Ties a franchise fucking record. 10 straight losses. Nothing makes me happier than the L.A. Lakers losing. Yeah, they make me fucking six. Magic John, I mean, make me sick. Magic Johnson, you're a fucking disgrace. Do something about your town. Get rid of Kobe Bryant. Go over there and rebuild around that center you got and go kick ass. Talking about big people, 30-year-old Calvin Megatron Johnson talks about he's retiring. Are you fucking kidding me? He's got a lot of money. He's, well, goddamn right. He's 30 years old. Uh, people ask, uh, w- w- what's going on? What I mean, is it a Detroit thing? Barry Sanders did the same thing? No, it's a money thing, guys. When you get $120 million in your career and you still got four years and $67 million left. And you can walk away from that? Yeah. That means you have a lot of money. And your money 
Your investor made you a lot more money with your money. That's when you walk away. Who the fuck walks away from $67 million? A moron. Especially a guy that's 30 years old who's he's a got, beast. He's got four years left on his contract. He's got another $67.7 million to make. And, and they he, can't hurt him. And he just says, ah, fuck, I don't need it. Moving on in entertainment news, uh, Black China. Oh, uh, here we go again. <laughs> Black China arrested in fucking Texas. The reports that trick-ass Rob Kardashian drove 19 hours to pick this bitch up. Oh, God. Yeah, China gets drunk, gets a DUI in Texas. Oh. And, and, and trick-ass Rob drives 19 hours to pick up Rob. I said, let the bitch ride you backwards and fuck her and take advantage of her. I didn't say drive 19 hours to pick the bitch up. Let <laughs> hatch. Hey, there's a hashtag, people, if you miss it. Hashtag, let that bitch ride you backwards. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> and when she goes to jail, hashtag, leave the bitch there. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Another hashtag. Hashtag, catch a bus, ho. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag call your parents, bitch. Yeah, you might be able to find you might be able to find a chick a little bit closer to you, dude. Hashtag call Tiger, ho. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have said. Go uh, call your family, call, call your, your baby's dad. Call Don't your call ba- me. Yeah, yeah, call your baby daddy, bitch. Do not call oh me. My oh god. my god. But like I said, entertainment news, ladies and gentlemen, we just try to give everybody happy. We try to keep you in loop with sports. We're making more money right now in college basketball and NBA than we ever have. Uh, Las Vegas is considering uh, putting their bid in, like I said, for the L.A. to move to Las Vegas and be the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't think it's happening. Rebels are also looking for a new stadium. It would be a good time for some powerful people to get together. If it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen now. I think they got a shot. We'll see. I say they have a shot, but it doesn't happen. Some reason Las Vegas just doesn't happen. Super Bowl fever. Uh, Steve Stevens' advice, VIP sports advice, is to go out there and do your own thing. Bet your prop bets. Prop your nuts up on the bookies back. Do whatever you can to make yourself some money. (laughs) Super Bowl is a day for amateurs, period. It's a day to go party. It's a day to have fun. If you're drinking, use Uber. Get yourself a ride home and be safe. Make sure you're there to wake up next to your kids or your wife or your husband the next fucking day. Uh, Nor does any other family need to be killed because you're coming home drunk from a fucking party. And let me just say this. Please, please, please listen to me. If you're ever going to listen to the skipper, listen to me now. Just because it's the Super Bowl... Don't take your entire fucking bankroll that you made the whole year long and go dump it on the fucking... That's the stupidest move in the fucking world. That's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Learn how to bet basketball. Yeah. Just uh, learn how to get into basketball and hockey and baseball's right around the corner. Don't dump your entire bankroll in the Super Bowl just because it's the big game. That's the stupidest thing that sports bettors do. And please listen to the skipper. Don't do that. Like I said... Uh, it, it's it's a gorgeous, uh, rainy, overcast day out here in Las Vegas. Nothing to do but make guys like you money. That's all I do for a living is study the lines, work with the guys that make the line, and figure out a way to get the best information possible for you. That's my job. Your job is to do your fucking day job, go out to eat with your wife, and let me make you money. This is a business for grown-ups. You have to treat it as a numbers game. Uh, Super Bowl is a day you put on jerseys, eat hot dogs, eat chicken wings, and party. That's a spectator this is the, day. This is a day that you do yeah. that. Yes. But... Every other time, this is a job you take dead serious. It's a numbers game. No different than the stock market, except for there's a hell of a lot more return betting sports than there is in the stock market, period. College basketball is kicking ass. We're in full effect. Like I said, Tuesday, we got West Virginia at Iowa State, UNLV, New Mexico, Kentucky, Tennessee. It's a couple games that I'm firing on. I'm talking about putting big fucking money on. And, uh, Nevada, you know, has a record-breaking year, bringing in $4 billion. For those states that don't want to make gambling legal, you've got to be out of your mind. Let's do something crazy. Let's do something absolutely fucking nuts. It's, Figure it out. It's, it's Monday. All right. Okay? For everyone that calls in, we're going to honor this for the first 25 people. 877-220-6540. You call in right now and say, I heard the podcast. I want the podcast deal. Here's the deal. You play college and pro basketball with us on a on an individual level, one-on-one level. We'll take you by the hand. We'll walk you right through it so there's no mistakes. A $100 bill. A $100 bill. You play basketball from now until the Super Bowl. <laughs> pad your bankroll so that if you do want to fire on the Super Bowl, at least you got the money to do it. The first 25 people that call in here, Steve, 877-220-6540 for a $100 bill. We're going to work with you for college and pro basketball from today through the Super Bowl. Now, if you don't take advantage of that, shame on you. You hate money, and you should probably be living on welfare because I can't help you. I love it. He said it right, ladies and gentlemen. We're running a special $100 bill uh, for those guys that are scared to take the plunge, for those guys out there that were on the fence. Do me a favor. Take your G-string off. 
loosen your bra strap up a little bit. Go to VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Give us the opportunity to flip your money like a world-class gymnast. Give us the opportunity to give you a second income. Everybody could use a second income. Why can't you? Are you kidding me? Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, hundred dollar bill. Hundred dollar bill. It's the no, only time. It, it's the only time you're going to get to deal with Skip, myself, or Kenny Kaufman. A hundred dollar bill, like I said, get you seven days of service. Let us show you how to get into basketball. Let us show you the formula for success, money management, and discipline. And let me show you how to make more money than you ever made in your motherfucking life. It's Monday Night Madness, ladies and gentlemen, from VIP Sports. Steve Stevens, the big skipper. Have a beautiful day. Let's go kick some ass, and don't let the players be the only ones that get paid. Give us a call. Fair enough. See you. Wouldn't want to be you. We love you. Fair enough. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a day. We play with big cash and we're blowing money fast. Riding in a plush Benz trunk full of money bags. I need a G for every light bulb on the Vegas strip. Naked bitches in my mansion dancing to some player 